the irony and the whole point of this video as I sit here editing it is that I think I forgot how to vlog. So the video isn't going to go overboard in any kind of way. It's not going to get overly dramatic. I'm just going to tell my thoughts and throw some visuals up to go along with it. So please bear with me. Just hear what I got to say. And here's the video. It's time for me to confront how wrong I've been about YouTube. The more people that find success on YouTube, the more people start to pursue it. And by the numbers and data alone, the more people fail. The data clearly states that up to 90% of the people that pursue a career in content creating on YouTube won't actually succeed. But I'm not here to talk about the people that don't make it. I'm actually here to talk about the people that do. As I am, you're probably seeing an influx of creators walking away from YouTube and creating content and pursuing other things. But if people are fulfilling their dreams, becoming content creators, escaping the misery of the nine to five hustle and bustle for other people, working for themselves and growing businesses, why on earth would anybody walk away from that? I mean, after all, isn't this what you wanted? You've achieved something that 90% of the people who attempt to don't. Well, I've watched a few of the farewell videos by some of my favorite content creators that are choosing to walk away and all of them seem to say the same exact thing, whether blatant or indirectly, but it seems that content creating has become the new nine to five trap. But more on this in just a moment. Uh, there's two ways to feel about being up this early in the day of morning. You can hate it or you can actually be okay with it. Barely six in the morning, I've been up since when well, I woke up at like 4.30. I typically wake up or I have my alarm set to get me up by five. But the point is all the same. You either hate it or you can deal with it better. The reason I hate it is because I have to do it. I don't want to do it right now. If it's a situation where I can do it by choice and I'm getting up to like work out or go handle some business, I'm okay with it. And I think it's a total mental thing when it comes to that. I typically do actually get up early in the morning when I have the option and choice to do it but there's just something about being forced to do it, having to do it, that just burns my soul. And anybody that watched the channel would know that I did that, like religiously and in good faith, even back when I didn't have to. Shout out to the Rams, by the way. Boom. Mm. And this is kind of one of the things I could make a personal point over. For a while, YouTube allowed me to do it a little more full time. And the way the results that I was getting was leading me, it in the moment didn't feel like there was any failing that could happen. I didn't foresee anything that was to come. But during that time, I was kind of getting up early in the morning, starting my day early. And I liked it. I didn't have a problem with it. I don't know if I had just psyched myself up to believe that, you know, I'm, I'm on my own and I'm doing this by choice and all of that. But a lot of it was just so I can have all the things that I wanted to make sure I did for myself personally, like work out and, you know, get good uh, nutrition in me and things like that out of the way so that I can have space and time and room to do content. So I guess I didn't see that what I was really doing was working that had become my new nine to five job. And in the beginning, when I first started creating, things just were not like that. I just, I made videos whenever I wanted to make videos on whatever I wanted to make videos on. And I guess if I'm being completely honest about it, and as sad as it's going to sound, that period was probably the happiest period in my whole creator journey. Being a creator is about trying new things and learning along the way, all the while becoming better at it and sharing the knowledge and the experience. But most of all, it's about doing something you love. Do what you love. What's strange is that during this period, even though it was the most sporadic and the most, you know, unorganized moment of this channel, being that it just started, it was the most free. It seemed like the most free. And I, I've been struggling trying to get back to that, that moment where just like I was just doing stuff and putting stuff out and just was free in, in my mind. Just I was just free to do so. I didn't worry about consequences. I didn't worry about if things would catch on. I didn't worry about who watched it. A lot of stuff only, you know, a lot of stuff has less than a hundred views and I did not work. That didn't worry me at all. I guess somehow I just knew that one day, one day it would get better, I guess. And deep inside, I just held on to that. And that was, that was enough to keep me from stressing over it and worrying about it. 
Because if you fast forward to now, things are definitely not the same as they used to be. I mean, the stress now is just overbearing at times. And it's just, it's a powerful feeling that I wish I could turn off. Oh boy, what a beautiful winter's day. It's the middle of winter, but we are doing mighty good right now. I love this. It's right then and there in those moments right there where the big, one of the biggest setups for disappointment kind of happened. Because as beginners, as people who are just starting and kind of looking forward to things get, always getting better, you don't have the foresight or the prompt to anticipate disappointment. That disappointment comes when you're not even expecting it because you don't know to expect it. You figure you're small, you're just starting, you know, things can only go up from here. And that's where, in my opinion, most people's minds are. That's where most people's minds are set at. And so then what ends up happening? Uh, you have a little bit of success. Things start growing, the channel start growing, you, you start getting views on, on your videos, uh, attention starts coming your way. And if that happens for long enough, you get used to that, like that becomes your new normal. So as that becomes your new normal, you don't foresee that things could go the other way, that things could fall down. You think still in your mind, things can only go up from here, but you'd be terribly wrong because reality has a way of telling you and letting you know when things are about to change. And you don't usually get a warning, especially when you're constantly watching your favorite creators do their thing and grow and you know create new business adventures and getting into new things and you know, those are all the things that you want to do. So you just don't consider the fact that you may have to take a step back and figure out what it is you need to do to get to that point. In your mind, or in our minds, we figure we've already made it, we're there. And trust me, nobody is exempt from this. Any YouTuber, any creator that I've talked to has dealt with this on some level or another at one point or another in time. So nobody's exempt from this. side note why is it that the older germans when they come to me and they want to talk the first thing they bring up is trump like i don't i don't give a shit about none of that stuff <laughs> i've really been digging these ginger shots and until i can get back to juicing my own these are going to be sufficient This is my first time visiting this particular eater in a long time, so it feels kind of good. It's been since like COVID time. Now, once creators reach that moment where things are no longer going upward and have kind of plateaued, an inevitable low point occurs. When this happens and for it to happen, it doesn't matter how big or small the channel is at that point. The low point is the low point for whatever that looks like for each individual creator. And so being as unprepared for this as most of us are, 
what ends up happening is you get into this moment of being desperate. All you want to do is get back to where you once were. You just want to get back to the moment where all you did was put your content out. You didn't really care what it did because each day just brought something new for you to try and, and experience. None of the stuff that came with growing a channel you were concerned with. You didn't concern yourself with any of that. You just release stuff on a day-to-day -day basis and it was what it was. What have you discovered? What happened? Uh, I'll tell you. Things change. <laughs> the algorithm change. Uh, people's interests change. People grow. People discover that they don't really resonate with how you do stuff now. You know, all the things you've learned and all the things you've picked up and are trying and things like that may not resonate with people as you grow and as they grow. They just may discover that they're no longer interested in the things that you're doing. And seeing that none of us can tell the future, can see the future ahead of time, you might have been one of the ones that invested into this heavily. You might have been one of the ones that thought this was going to work out and you find yourself in a position where you have to make different decisions and make some changes in your strategy and what you're doing. And you just don't know which direction to head into. And it becomes especially problematic if you're one of the ones that invested your financial future into this, into something like this, because now you don't have a backup. You don't have a just in case. So what the hell do you do? And actually not many people are gonna like that I'm saying this. I think one of the problems with beginner, uh, smaller business starters or creators is they treat the situation as if it's already done. They treat it as if they've already made it, like they're already there just because they're, the people they idolize and the people they model themselves after are there and have made it. They forget that lots of work has to be done before you can rest in your successes. So for example, right, there was this creator that I used to follow a couple years ago that built kind of a decent following, I mean, a respectable following, considering not many of us make it to the amount of subscribers that I've made it to and the, the size of the channel that I've made it to. I used to follow this guy and he made videos often, quite often while he was building his following. And what ended up happening is he just started talking about things outside of what actually drew that crowd in started talking about things outside of what drew his initial following to his channel and i know what was going on he was treating the channel as if he had already made it so he thought he can talk about anything and everything about his life and just nobody cared about that stuff these this around this time is when i discovered that i had kind of did the same thing almost not to the extent that he did but i was kind of almost doing the same thing and it just, it's a hard discovery that not many people are gonna care about your everyday life and your everyday mundane thing, especially if that's not what drew them into your, your channel in the first place. Yeah, so much for the sunshine. Quick side note, one of the biggest benefits for me right now during the farmer strike and the Deutsche Bahn strike is hardly anybody is in the stores and I get to come shop at will with nobody in my way. Well, hardly anybody in my way. Y'all know me, you know why I love my Apple stuff. But we're not here for that today. We're here for one of these babies. Well, because it's time to step up my gaming and get back into it. I've been out of gaming for a long time yet. And it's about time to um, get that gaming channel started or at least going because I haven't put anything on that gaming channel. Quick side note, if you like games, go on over there. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, let's 
make our way back to the house. Making the case for myself, even though I had hopes of one day being sustainable with this thing that I'm doing, I still kind of in the back of my mind kept the idea that if all fails, then I could always just go back to traditional work. Um, I didn't want to do that, obviously. That was never the, the plan. I would never plan to do that. But I still kind of kept that in the back of my head. So in, in the event that nothing worked out, I knew that I would never be down and out completely because I could always just go back to work, which is what I ended up doing. So what's my point? I guess my point is I don't regret anything. And if I had to start over and do it again, I would probably do it the same way because I like the way it went. I like the content I've made. I like the thing, things that I've done along the way. And those things are my expression of who I am and how I want to be represented and how I want to look back and see myself. So I wouldn't change any of that. But I guess after a certain amount of time of discovering this, it was incredibly apparent that we need more people speaking on the other side of this. So you have the one side where people start being a creator and it works out, you know, it either blows up quickly or it gradually grows over time. And people can, they only have that experience. They only have that testimony. Oh, I started a YouTube channel. I started creating and look at me. I kept at it and you know, blah, blah, blah. You've heard the things all before. Or you have the people that start doing it and you know, continuously do it and things just don't work out. Those people have a story to tell and they want to be heard too. Typically, only the people with the numbers get heard. Only the people that can show you their numbers get heard. Nowadays, unless you have a big following, huge subscriber count, getting massive views and things like that, nobody really wants to hear what you have to say. But some of the most informational, some of the most knowledgeable people have smaller channels. And they are struggling just to get heard. People don't believe in them because they just don't have the numbers. But it has to be taken into account that everything changes. YouTube has changed. It's not the same YouTube from two years ago, three years ago. That YouTube isn't the same as two, three years prior to it. Things change. So not everybody's going to be able to jump out on YouTube and just grow massive channels anymore. It's just not going to work out that way for the bulk and majority of the people. But it doesn't mean that just because they don't have a huge channel that they don't have anything to say. Or that what they're saying isn't valid. So I guess it just would be nice if more of the larger creators and a lot of them are doing it. Don't get me wrong. It would just be nice if more of the larger creators told the side of this thing that people don't necessarily get to see. Doesn't mean that people will care. It doesn't mean that anybody will care what I'm saying right now. But it would have been nice to have the availability of the information. So I bought my daughter a piano for Christmas, right? And for some reason it wasn't sounding right. So we wrote to the person, to the seller, and they said it was missing something or something might be malfunctioning with it that I could replace myself and it doesn't void my warranty. So this should be the part for that. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. It says we love music. so. I'm pretty sure it's from them. Um, I'm gonna open this and see uh, see if this works. I'm gonna have to install it myself, so hopefully it works out. So let's let's get into it and see what's going on. All right, looks easy enough. That's what we have. So I'll put that on in a couple days. I'm not gonna do it today. Probably won't get to it tomorrow because I have to work. Um, 
but I'll replace that and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully that works out because my daughter really likes playing and she hates not being able to. So I know by this point, people are taking the standpoint of, well, you're not wrong about what you're saying, but do you have any remedies for this or do you have any suggestions or you know, what is one to do? Well, I can't exactly say that I have the answers for this, but I do know that one thing people were right about is diversifying. That is definitely one of the things I would not sleep on by far. Now, to help clarify this, the common phrase that comes to mind is never put all your eggs in one basket. We've all heard this before. You heard me mention earlier in the video that I did have kind of a fallback on plan, which was I could always just return to work and really everybody has that option. But I did too kind of discover early on that I needed to keep a multitude of ways of sustaining myself and keeping myself above water in the event that my YouTube channel should fail. So I did kind of have these things going for me. Another thing that I have going for myself and I fully understand that not everybody has this, most people actually don't, is the fact that I never had to be 100% dependent on any of this because I still have a few payouts for life. I have at least three and two of them are from me serving in the US military and the other is one that I created for myself years ago. I still have these forever paychecks that I get to fall back on. And as I said, I realized that not everybody has this, but let me tell you how safe they are. So I could quit my job right now and I could never go into another business endeavor or content creating or any other kind of anything and just stop all that stuff right now and I would still be okay. The thing is, I would just be okay. And I don't want to just be okay. You know, I, I want to grow in my endeavors. I want to expand. I want to do better in, in, in anything that I put my hands in and, I, and that I try. You know, people want to be successful in the things that they put their mind to and the things that they put their time and energy and sometimes a little bit of money into. So that's my thing. I understand a lot of people in the comments section tells me, you know, you think you can just be out here not working. And, you know, in a way I kind of do. It's not like I don't have income coming. I have income and I could be OK with that income. This is called investing. I'm investing for my future. Sometimes things fail. Sometimes things work out. I'm hoping that the bulk and not everything has failed, but I'm hoping that the bulk of the things I try and the bulk of the things that I uh, put my mind to trying to succeed at work out. That's my goal and my plan. Anything, any chance you take, any business you try, any endeavor that you try is going to be risky if that's the only thing you're doing. If it fails, you have nowhere else to turn. There's no other options. So I guess what I'm saying is trying multiple things and trying to acquire as many streams of income as possible, especially if you're not like me with, you know, safety nets. I just happen to have safety nets. Still ended up going back to work though, because, you know, I don't wanna just be okay, man. Which brings me to probably one of the most interesting points in this content creator journey. And that's where all I wanna do is create content but I'm not really doing it. And I'll just say that first off, I'll never not be a content creator. Secondly, doing this since 2017, 2018, and you know, watching the growth that's happened, which I am uh, incredibly appreciative for, but watching that growth halt and knowing that I have no direct control over that growth and me being the kind of person that really likes sharing the things that I love and the things that I like to do and the, the end result of doing those things, with other people as much as I do, I'm still human. So doing, going as hardcore as I go, you know, I've, I've gone daily for substantial amounts of time and just not being in direct control over who gets to see it and, you know, how many people come aboard and, and ride this wave with me. It kind of takes a toll on me. I'm, I'm only human. When I drop back and take these breaks away from it, I'm not quitting being a content creator. I'm just, cutting back on the sharing process. Y'all wouldn't even believe how much stuff I got in the tuck. I, I have tons of videos that I have, that I could have just released and put out, but the way the responses have been, it's just enough to make me not hit the publish button. As a human, I can only take so much of putting so many hours into work, being so proud of that work, and it's just not getting the responses that I anticipate. Now, I completely understand that nobody owes me or anybody else on this platform anything. 
YouTube doesn't owe me anything. Subscribers, viewers, algorithms, nobody owes me anything. I get that, but it doesn't change the fact. So me cutting back on the sharing is just my way of keeping my mental health intact and always being sure that I don't let the pursuit of YouTube success overshadow the fun I have and the love that I have for doing it. Because it'll be in that right there that lies the gotcha moment, the thing you didn't expect. Everything that you're reaching for, everything that you're trying so hard to achieve and strive for and all of those things becomes a thing that actually stresses you out. And before you know it, it's more like work than you ever anticipated. You try so hard to get away from it. It might be even the reason you walked away from like working a traditional job and joining this side, joining the creator side, the entrepreneur side, as it were. But the more you do it, the more stress builds up, the more work you have to do, the more you have to keep up with an upload schedule and views and editing and that just the whole thing, it turns into work. And surely it's no coincidence why a lot of creators are quitting and walking away from this. Some of your favorites, some of my favorites, they're all taking a step away. They're either walking away from it completely or taking a step back at least. And many of these people are people with larger, more successful channels, established channels, and they're choosing to walk away from this. And I can't say that I blame them. I mean, it just becomes too tough at times. And shout out to the people who are able to recognize that early enough. But check out what Matt from Yes Theory had to say about the whole situation. Is like you see which ones are more stressed out than others. I've often found that the creators who are the least stressed out are the ones that don't need it to work. This isn't their one way to make money. It's usually the ones that have like a business and are also, you know, happen to be creators. But the second the creating and the ad revenue and the brand deals becomes your main stream of income, you run into this conundrum where it's this thing needs to work. And so you become obsessed with these views. It just fucks with how I speak to the audience, it fucks with like my relationship with creativity. And that's exactly what I had said. A lot of these creators that have these channels, they aren't leaning on them. I'm sure at some point these channels became a huge chunk and a huge uh, distribution of where their finances are coming from, but they weren't leaning on them. They diversified. Maybe they were doing YouTube on the side and it became lucrative, so they kept doing it. But as far as their main sources of income, they have those elsewhere. It's coming from other sources and they're able to walk away from this creating thing if they need to. And that's what a lot of them end up doing. Although he didn't quit, one of my favorite creators, Matt Diavella, was affected by some of the things that I had just spoken about and made some drastic changes to his business and his YouTube channel going forward. But I'm going to miss this guy so much because I learned so much from him over the years. A lot about filmmaking and just being a creator all in general. I had so much fun following this guy's channel, but not just how to produce films and make videos, but also his travel adventures. He just recently quit and chose to put his energy into other things. Matty Hapoya, that's my man. Tom Scott, Leon Hendricks, Matt from Yes Theory, Master Rug, Gideon, Shorty from Cinecom, Meat Canyon, Joel Haver, Kelly Stamps, Matt Pat from Game Theorists, Hannah Witten, Seth Everman are just a few that I have on my list here that have recently given up YouTube. I said earlier in the video that I will always be a creator and I don't have any doubts in my mind that that will end up being true. And I guess as long as I'm putting videos on YouTube, I'll be a YouTuber. Thing is though, I no longer have the will to pursue content creating in the way that I did in the past. I'm no longer gonna pursue this for it to one day be my dream job. A job is still a job. A job will always be a job, no matter how much you're doing it or how much you like it, it's still a job. I'm no longer gonna pursue this at the hope, with the hopes of this being my dream job and this one day being some big channel, you know, where I'm getting, I have tons of subscribers and getting massive amounts of views. Brands are knocking down my door and it's just sustaining me. I'm just no longer gonna pursue it that way. Film and video making, content creating is my heart and I will hold on to that. As Marquez said, you gotta find that thing and hold on to it. And if you are a creator, in some way there is a part of the game, there's something that you fell in love with at the beginning, it's really worth figuring out what that is and just keeping that. The more energy I put into trying to grow this YouTube channel part of business, the less I feel passionate about the thing that I want to love forever. And having done this for as long as I've done it, I just cannot chase and chase and chase any longer. I choose peace. I choose settlement. 
I choose to relax. And that's basically what I'm alluding and concluding to. This channel is basically going to become my hobby again. Whatever it does, it does. I don't care. It's just going to be somewhere I go to put my stuff. And whatever you see is going to be what I wanted to do and share in that moment. Not chasing nothing no more. I appreciate each and every one of you that have been a part of this channel over the past several years. And those of you that have been around from the beginning, extra shout out to you. I truly apologize to the ones that stuck with me in this and thought this was going to one day be a large community. Um, and I thank the ones that choose to stick around after this. I'll still be here. The channel will still be here. I'll still be uploading. It just won't be in pursuit of anything. It'll just be whatever I feel like uploading and that'll just be what it is, not looking for anything. And so since the channel is not gonna be going in any kind of direction, there might be a lot of you who are holding hopes out for specific kinds of content. Those of you with memberships, I fully understand and respect your decision if you decide to retract your membership to the channel. Thank you for the time that you did have put in and serve and contribute to this community. I really do appreciate that. And it's cool if you want to keep your membership around here, too. I'm just saying it will not hurt my feelings to retract it due to the changes that are about to happen on the channel fully understand. So no, I'm not quitting as it were. I'm not trying to join some bandwagon or anything like that. But I think I have made a decision that for this channel feels better than anything or any decision that I've made for this channel and this whole pursuit of YouTubing in a long, long time. And so that's that.